So before taking a last round of q and I would like to introduce our last speaker for today, who's Radic Przepiawski. Um, I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> Who is a migrant artist as well as media and contemporary art scholar lecturing in interactive digital media in the School of Computer Science and Statistics at Trinity College Dublin. Radic graduated from um, Trinity College Dublin with a PhD in Digital Art Humanities and Humanities, focusing on Polish new avant-garde of the 70s. Uh, he is currently writing a monograph on the elusive artist Marek Konieczny. Um, at the Trinity College Dublin, Radic organised a conference on art in the Anthropocene in 2019, where he also curated a thematic strand on post-cinema. He also organized a conference on Deleuze and Art and another symposium on Deleuze and Aesthetics and Multiplicity and Cosmotechnics and also edited, co-edited a volume on Deleuze, Guattari and the Art of Multiplicity published by Edinburgh University Press in 2020. Um, among others, Radek is interested in contemporary art and its interstices with science and technology, as well as the notion of cosmotechnics and neurophilosophy. Uh, he translated a volume of Tatar um, in Ruayat into English, um, and um, his artistic practice as well revolves around entanglements between the, art, the earth, the cosmos and sustainable artistic techniques. Thank you for being with us, the, even if we couldn't afford to have you otherwise than via these technologically mediated images, but um, thanks once again for accepting it, um, to be here with us this way today. Rather, I'm yeah. glad to have you and to listen to your talk. Uh, no worries. Uh, thanks so much for introducing me. Uh, one disclaimer, I have some problems with my computer. It just crashes um, all of a sudden, so it might happen. So if this were to happen, so it's going to be like a performative lecture like this that will um, incorporate those little accidents. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the case. Um, OK, uh, I hope uh, you can all uh, hear me well. So uh, I'm going to um, Chris. Uh, so um, let me start. So responding to uh, the uh, pragmatic provocation of the conference, uh, conceptualized as Lenin's dictum, what is to be done, inviting scholars to ponder I thought, methodological challenges to art history of research in Central and Eastern Europe. My paper is going to zoom in on the work of Jerzy Litwinski. Uh, and the capacity of his many conceptualizations to account for the condition of artistic production under the Anthropocene, articulating a comprehensive proposal of environmental art history capable of commenting on contemporary artworks. Uh, now, before I start, uh, before I start uh, speaking of challenges of research and the spirits of, of politics of locations proposed by Russell Bardotti and resonated with Lenin's eponymous text from 1901, uh, what is to be done. Let me start with a disclaimer that I'm a precarious part-time academic worker at Trinity College Dublin. My academic institution does not offer support for my research or conference travel. If you would like to get to know what my working conditions are like, the Irish Federation of University Teachers has prepared a report called Precarious Employment in Higher Education, launched this uh, Friday, uh, sorry, this uh, Wednesday, which is available from their website. Okay, now on to my presentation. Jerzy Ludwiński uh, was an itinerant Polish art critic, historian and curator, but also in a more diffused way, an artist philosopher working in diagrams, notes, short texts and lecture plans, associated with the inchoate minor uh, avant-garde that swept the People's Republic of Poland in the 1970s. He was associated with Wrocław art scene, but then in to Torun, where I am from. Um, now, uh, resonating with socialist cybernetics on the one hand and dynamic models of materialism inspired by 
biology, geology, astrophysics, and quantum physics, on the other, Ludwinsky's thinking on art and the earth was parallel to Dulles and Guattari, and anticipating in many respects contemporary discussions on the anthropogenic environmental change. Ludwinsky's art theory was also suffused with affective affirmation of an open, of an open cosmos in a way uh, that has some parallels to Gombrowicz, perhaps. Proposing radical modes of doing and thinking otherwise, Ludwinsky's chief preoccupation lies with the question of multi-scalar ontogenetic change across human and non-human registers. Ludwinsky, as I argue, provides a laboratory of thought in motion which reinvents Anthropocene geomedia or geomediation as an ethical and ecologically sustainable paradigm. Now, um, his ongoing project for his many decades was the search for the speculative models for art while thinking with and through Earth. Ludwinsky's media of choice were notes and short texts, as well as diagrams. So this is a case of dia diagrammatic thinking. I should stress here again that I consider Ludwinsky not just a theoretician, but also an artist or artist philosopher. And what he's doing is as much uh, philosophy as artistic research. I'm going to discuss Ludwinsky's contribution under another of headings, staging a conversation between him and contemporary art in the Anthropocene, as well as contemporary philosophers of media. My presentation is conceived in itself as a lecture performance, and it's in itself a homage to Ludwinsky. Diagrams. Ludwinsky's often perplexing diagrams show Earth functioning as flush with the becoming of the Earth, undergoing planet-wide changes of energy distribution, whose forces or tendencies are sometimes implicit, sometimes marked by vectors. Following the geological processes of rock formation and tectonic movements, resonating with a mutant embryology, reminiscent of car current synthetic biology research, allowing for the manufacturing of, I quote, synthetic human entities with embryo-like features, um, end quote. It's a quotation from a contemporary article on synthetic biology. So, um, and this allows uh, manufacturing of um, human pluripotent stem cells that can skip the canonical embryological stages, and at the same time are capable of articulating a novel body plan in response to its medium. And this really resonates with Ludwinsky's diagrams from the 1970s that showcase this molecular plasticity. Ludwinsky's diagrams diagnose yet unknown geomedia and biomedia. They are avatars of something both in either biological and geological, a stem cell and a rock. Perhaps it's not a thing at all, but a tension, a potential. The diagrams are not uh, so much about a description, expression, but also a construction of new models of thinking through the art of line that becomes liberating from its servility to outlining a shape which delimits the figure and the ground, the inside and the outside. These are forms or specimens of speculative world building in motion. These diagrams lend themselves to multiple actualizations. They can be modeled cybernetically as semi-random chains, or um, as philosopher Yukui would say, as contingent cosmotechnics. Ludwinsky's lecture notes, in turn, are also diagrammatic, presented in a frequently cryptic, compact, shorthand style, with many abbreviations which lend, them, lend themselves, uh, uh, which lends them to many possible readings. Art technology and the paradox of dematerialization. In a text from 1969, Ludwinsky identified what he saw, I quote, as the technological face, unquote, of contemporary art, as complicit in the destruction of the environment. This environmental degradation was caused, uh, thought Ludwinsky, by the expansion of the human in all areas of life both as, I quote, material emanation, unquote, and, I quote, production of enormous energy, unquote, extending to the cosmos. He argues that such technological overproduction needs to make way 
for the ethical path of minimalism. But at the same time, he identified a curious paradox of conceptual art of the day. The dematerialization of the art object, which Konieczna saw as an ecological, ecologically sustainable strategy, at the same time required the support of an enormous technological apparatus in the sense of labor, materials, and equipment, entailing massive energy expenditure to achieve the dematerialization effect. With this kid's insight, has gained renewed validity in the contemporary age of art and philosophy under the Anthropocene, which seeks to imagine an inhuman unlife after the human and the demise of our attendant technologies, but at the same time frequently partakes in what Andrew Powell calls techno affirmationist connectedness. The footage being shown, documenting a reprojection analog light installation by artist Jacob Matler, captures this paradox of the considerable, yet hidden behind the surface energy expenditure needed to support the installation, which at the same time is designed to make a point about the impending human extinction and the powers of non-human perception. Matner's work discloses 1990s naive techno-optimism with its focus on the supposedly disembodied digital technology. That's an attitude which still lingers today. Uh, for example, we are seeing data or data cloud in place of a large-scale energy consuming server farms, all those it's uh, imagined as being on the cloud, not really focusing on the energy sources and the ecological aspect. Now, another aspect would be rapid and gigantic data visualization. Ludwinski launches a call for not ignoring matter and energy or labor as he calls the physical framework unquote, of the dematerialized artwork. The paradox of a dematerialization, which requires a massive material support for its work, prompts Ludwinski to rethink what is at stake in a work of art. He concludes by suggesting an understanding of an artwork as stepping into a larger creative process irreducible to its man-made materializations yet at the same time as inseparable from its technical uh, plane. This resonates with current research into green um, ICT engineering that um, looks at, um, uh, for example, video streaming as a form of uh, expanded system boundary uh, that connects the, uh, the data centers, user devices, and networks. Now, uh, Ludwig's ideas resonate with Hito Steger's notion of poor image. A low-res, highly compressed image, which I quote uh, Hitler Steyer here, will lose matter and gain speed, uh, unquote. As Steyer suggests, the core image is not real in the sense of the original, but it is real as it exposes, I quote, its own real conditions of existence, swarm circulation, digital dispersion, fractured and flexible temporalities, unquote, articulating both resistance and compliance with respect to the capitalist neoliberal circulation. Future of art beyond the avant-garde logic of expansion, conceptualizing, conceptualizing change, thinking collapse. Konek uh, Ludwinski offers an account of the emergence of the, the avant-garde 1970s, which is also an account of a certain extinction, a vision of a collapse which also launches a certain future. The breakthrough year of 1970 that marked the threshold of intensity of Polish conceptualism at the same time functioned as a caesura announcing the end of history as we know it. The caesura uh, ushered what Ludwinski calls a post-artistic epoch, which um, is also uh, launching the ahistorical or trans-historical paradoxical uh, implosive art. This is a term called implosive art. Now, Ludwinski conceives the turn of 1960s and 70s as an initial cosmic singularity hypothesized by physics as a threshold where an extreme contraction or compression of space-time is at the same time a barrier of infinite potential stretched between zero and infinity. The Cisura explodes the unitary notion of avant-garde, which had come to be conceptualized as a stage in a linear art evolution made up of mutually exclusive, separate and sharply delineated stages. Now, those stages of linear evolution of art can be diagrammed as progressive accumulation of layers, whereby the newest layer 
is outermost and epidermal, akin to the rings of a tree. But in 1970, what happened was that this model exploded. There's um, another presentation of this explosion. And as Rubinsky says, what is at stake here is a more fundamental dismantling of the avant-garde or of the uh, historical avant-garde as predicated upon the unitary model of art as the a priori anchor against which the conquest of non-artistic reality, dialectically opposite, uh, opposed to it, could be made. Such avant-garde is always ahead of art, on the outside border of art, facing and pulverizing the non-artistic. It's, it's really violent. This progressive expansion of the field of art is motivated by a desire to seize new territories. The notion of the avant-garde is predicated on an opposition between tradition and modernity and presupposes a common goal. So uh, for Ludwinski, this very idea uh, of functioning behind, being, uh, behind historical avant-garde is also a kind of uh, a colonial one. Implosive art making kin in the Anthropocene. Ludwinski constructs a vision of future art. What he terms implosive art has an intrinsic ethical and ecological dimension because it does not conquer the world as its transcendent operator like the historical avant-garde does. Ludwinski does not refer to implosive art as neo-avant-garde, but as underground art. I really like this notion underground art. Implosive art functions as an involution an inward oriented accretion or an internal genesis that immanently and nonviolently affirms and protects the work in a piecemeal manner. This ethical vision of art aims, I quote, to preserve and protect the world, in contradistinction to the historical avant garde, which I quote, seeks to transform the world and improve the human as operating with it. Uh, Ludwinski argues that this. Um, New art, implosive art, also called the third art, I quote, um, uh, wishes to uh, co evolve with the world, unquote. Now, Lutinsky understands the world uh, very close to understanding of the, the lesson Guattari in an expanded, non anthropocentric environmental sense. While the implosive art is defensive, diffuse, decelerated, and inward looking from the point of view of the world, the um, Explosive historical avant garde is offensive, concentrated, linear, and theological, quick pace, and outward directed. So, uh, what are the main takeaways for art history of the region from those uh, concepts? Now, um, what uh, we can extract from this is that uh, art history, as diagrammed by a single artwork, should be read uh, at once on a microphysical level of molecules, on a human level, on a geological level, and last but not least, on a cosmological scale. Um, and those um, two models uh, for evolution of art um, um, showcase a shift from linear history, grounded upon the idea towards progress, uh, linear evolution as with historical Western avant-garde as its root, uh, and a second type, which is rhizomatic non-linear history, confluent with the idea of punctuated evolution, dotted with singular events which affect profound change in kind. Now, Konieczny um, not only does this kind of, not only applies geology to um, art history, uh, but also um, unfolds transversely um, a sort of world yet to come. So for him, um, he's not only diagnosing, he's also un unfolding. Um, uh, it's a case of speculative world building, so to speak. Mountain of art. So um, this is very interesting. Um, uh, Ludwinski di uh, also diagrams this implosive art as a mountain, strangely enough. And what he says is that this mountain accretes into its depth and towards its middle, right? which is this very strange, unique kind of mountain. Um, and uh, this implosive art does not seek to annex the world, but instead ex extends a forest surface whose imploding energetic perforations mark an array of disparate heterogeneous dimensions of the real. 
while implicit art can only be sensed and it's akin to imperceptible seismic murmurs or invisible changes, it nonetheless disrupts or blurs the fixed order of time and space by introducing a series of trans-historical connections across time and space. So this is a kind of non-violent uh, uh, revolution of sensing that allows this uh, trans-historical connections across time and space. And one might say that uh, what is remote in metric space and linear time becomes a single-folded topological space. However, there's no communication between two different uh, levels without undergoing qualitative change. And Lutwinski devised a series of conceptual uh, avatars that describe how artistic practice can unite two uh, temporal timescales. And this connection is not devices, but is conceptualized um, as lens, glue, telepathy, telekinesis, both cosmic and X-ray radiation, uh, diffuse luminous lights. Um, and this is used to approach this untimely trans-historical event that he saw as moments of creative rupture, a paradoxical revolution without revolution, a breakthrough without a breakthrough, a cut that connects. Uh, Ludwinski conceptualizes moments of radical change, both artistic and sociocultural, as cracks, some, I quote, as cracks, something that happens in these gaps, rifts, holes. So it's really important uh, that he moves from just the artistic to also social and trying to think about those moments of change, uh, also from a non-violent uh, point of view. Uh, I hope I still have some time because I have more material. I'm always running uh, out of time, but I'm just going to continue. Okay, LiDAR art analysis. In 1981, Ludwinski observed, I quote, that the 70s initiated a recuperation of tendencies that were not so long ago considered traditional, unquote. He saw a marked resurgence of interest in pre-modern art, in art publications, and the paradoxical situation whereby, I quote, what garners the most interest are the kinds of art most removed in time and space, barely comprehensible to us, unquote. As Ludwinski points out, this renewed interest in traditional art also extends to prehistorical rock art and megalithic art. This resonates nowadays with Timothy Morton's interest in charisma-driven hunter-gatherer societies before the um, advent of Neolithic uh, agriculture in the fertile present, as well as contemporary art historical research arguing for the contemporary eruption of preposterous Baroque, Mikeval, anachronic Renaissance and medieval modern, this is Alexander and Angel here. Now this implosive art um, has a past-future orientation. And this um, art's connection with the past and rather kind of traveling to the past and changing it requires a new type of analysis. And uh, according to Konieczny, uh, sorry, to Ludwinski, I quote, while previously the focus was placed on form, on the semblance of art, now one has to drill deep inside of these artistic phenomena, reach to the, their very sources out of which they grew to extract them as if with their roots, or better still, the soil attached to them." Uh, unquote. Uh, Ludwinski's vision resonates with the Lisbon project of transcendental empiricism and can be reformulated as a creative sensing of the virtual conditions that have given rise to the actual empirical sensible artistic fact. Ludwinski visualizes such procedure as an X-ray scan or an aerial archaeological uh, survey. Um, of the mountain of art, which reveals a mutual transhistorical coexistence of its multiple layers, corresponding to different media, periods, uh, and vectors of metamorphosis, now stacked atop one another as if relics of a compressed Maya city amid the Yucatan jungle. And there's lots of references to the Yucatan um, in uh, Ludwinski's work. As Lutwinski argues, such approach flattens ontological hierarchy and sequentially in favor of a larger and sequentiality, in favor of a larger geological vista, but it's also a creative endeavor 
bringing to attention isolated pockets of marginalized art phenomena. Ludwinski's approach anticipates the technology um, called LIDAR, uh, used for aerial survey of different archaeological artifacts and areas, and considered by Joanna Zielinska as an example of non-human post photography. The slider technical assemblage consists of an airborne laser sensor which emits light, a camera which captures light, and algorithms which extract 3D models from the accumulated data. So I suppose we can say that um, uh, the Ludwinski's ideas on the mountain of art and this um, archaeology of art resonate with contemporary um, thinking, uh, ceramic media theory. Okay, last but not least, archaeology of art, art as a mount, and this is going to be my concluding um, uh, section. In the early 1980s, Ludwinski becomes interested in various mounds or hills, which for him are overgrown relics of squashed temporal layers of human existence, as encapsulated in the hills, which are the traces of Mesopotamian polities such as Ur, Uruk, or Lagash. For Ludwinski, the mountain, a quote, is the whole architecture and urban planning in a nutshell, unquote. But at the same time, it flattens and neutralizes human privilege and its attendant attributes of, I quote, form, function, and content, unquote, exposing the work of non-human forces. The mountain is revealed as a man-made accumulation, or rather a natural cultural complex, not as a source of sublime nature, but a couple of thousand years squashed into a pile of trash whose entanglements we can never fully grasp. The figure of the mountain also functions for Ludwinski as a paradigm of implosive art. As he points out, art is the opposite case when compared to geology. In the latter case, that which is older is large more deeply. With art, it is, at least on the surface, the same case. However, one difference here is the most creative phenomena, the most visionary and penetrating, tend to descend underground. Indeed, one no longer speaks of the avant-garde, but the underground. The mountain of art accretes into its depth and towards its middle. That's why archaeology of art is completely different. And uh, we can say that Ludwinski's ideas resonate with media archaeology. Well, I think, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I think yeah. that could have been a nice conclusion towards your presentation. Yeah. If okay. one, please, Perfect. would you be willing to present us the conclusions, because we're quite running out of time and out of the space we are having the conference and we're going to be keep talking okay. about a lot. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let me conclude. Um, as I understand that uh, what is at stake uh, in both art and art philosophy for Lutwinski is an ethical and sustainable practice of exposing forces that continue to traverse actual states of affairs, making it resonant resonate through expressive materials. Such Anamendieta's earth body sculptures from 1970s, consisting of marking the earth of pre-Columbian Zapotec archaeological sites in Mexico, Oaxaca Valley, uh, are photograms fossils sensing and qualitatively changing the past future of the Andalusian. Thank you.